Okay, so we have now recorded the positions of the falling ball, and we have a graph that we would like to analyze. We actually have a graph, and we also have a table with numerical values, in case we want that. So we can control click now on either one. Let's uh, control click on the graph. And once again, we get a very nice menu, and the option that we're going to choose this time is Analyze. And when we do that, a new window opens up, which shows the same graph, but now we have um, more options. The option that we're interested in here is Fit. What we're going to try and do is fit a curve to this graph. Like I said before, we expect this to be a parabola. We can try to fit a parabola to this and see uh, whether the fit is good. Before we do that, though, let's change the look of this graph. We'll go over here to the style of the uh, data points, and you see that the style is a little red square, and the little red squares are joined by a green line, and we want to get rid of that green line. So let's click in that box, and the line is checked as visible. Let's uncheck that so that it won't be visible, and it disappears. So we can see more clearly when we fit a curve to this whether the curve uh, gives good fit or not. Now, uh, to do that, we'll check the box that says Fit. And down here we have some options. If we want, we can fit a straight line to this curve, which obviously wouldn't do much good. Um, but if we click on the drop-down menu, we can see that we have other choices. We have a parabola, a cubic, a Gaussian bell-shaped curve, an exponential, and a sinusoid curve. Now, we expect this to be a parabola, so let's try to fit a parabola. The equation that the program is going to try to fit is the f of the form a times t squared y is a times t squared plus b times t plus c, where a, b, and c are the three constants, the three parameters in this curve that the program is going to play with so as to get as good a fit as possible. Now we have two choices. We can actually do this either by hand or let the program do the fitting. Uh, and to begin with, at least, let's allow the program to do that. And in order to achieve that, we check the box that says Auto Fit, and there you go. So now that pink curve is the curve of best fit that the program has found, and it is pretty good. Here in this little table, we see the values that uh, the program has found for the best fit parameters. Now, <clears throat> notice in particular that the parameter called a, which is the coefficient of t squared. Now, I know that if this is in free fall under the action of gravity, theoretically, this parameter should be one half of the acceleration, because the quadratic term in time is one half of the acceleration times t squared. So that should be one half of the acceleration due to gravity. So we find that the coefficient is minus 4.9. So if we multiply this by 2, we get minus 9.8, which is a really good approximation to the acceleration due to gravity. So we've done rather well. The minus sign, incidentally, notice, was because when we chose the coordinate system, the positive values of y were upwards. So, and we started at the origin too, so the acceleration is towards the negative y's, it's uh, downwards, so it has a minus sign. What does b represent? b is the coefficient of t, and it should be really the initial velocity along y, the component of the velocity along y um, initially. And we see that it is not zero. And in fact, if you look at the curve here, you can see that the initial slope is definitely not zero. It is something like minus 0.6 in our units, which are meters per second, 0.6 meters per second. 
Now, why would we get an initial velocity that is not zero? There are two possibilities, and we really can't distinguish between them. One possibility is that the first frame that we analyzed is not really when the ball was released from rest. Maybe the ball was already moving down a little bit um, before that first frame, so that when we capture that first position, the ball is no longer stationary. The other possibility is that the experimenter is releasing the ball with his hand, and it is very hard to release the ball so as not to impart any velocity to the ball initially. He's, he's doing it as carefully as he can. He's taking his time and he's making sure that as, as much as he can, he just simply opens his fingers without pushing the ball up or down. But perhaps a little, a little push is inevitable and we might be seeing that effect there as well. So the initial velocity is quite small. It's only about 0.6 meters per second. It's quite reasonable. The, uh, the other coefficient, c, would be the initial position of the ball. And you see that it is 2.2 millimeters, which is very close to zero. Um, it's not exactly zero because we couldn't place the origin of the coordinate system exactly at zero, but it's a very good approximation. So I'm very pleased with the acceleration. <coughs> uh, 9.8 is very close to the acceleration due to gravity. Now, we can do something more interesting with this as well. We can wonder whether, if we change the value of the acceleration a little bit, whether the fit will really become visibly worse. So, in order to see that, we can click on the box that contains the value of the acceleration, and you see that a new little box appears with two arrows, an upper arrow and a down arrow, and this allows us to change the parameter value by what it says here. So 10%. 10% perhaps is a bit much. So let's click on that 10% and we'll get some more options. We can, uh, we can choose to vary the parameter by 1% at a time. And let's do that. Let's click on that. <coughs> so if I click on the up arrow, it's going to make the um, one half of the acceleration parameter, uh, the A parameter, 1% uh, bigger. And if I click on the down arrow, it's going to change it by 1% downwards. So let's change it by 1% upwards. And you see that the curve has shifted a little bit, especially at the later times. Let me shift it down again so you can see that. It's not really very much. So the curve has changed imperceptibly. If I, if I go down by 1%, the curve shifts a little bit, too. So um, a change of 1% in the parameter value hardly changes the curve at all. If I, if I go up, let's say, 2%, now we can see that the curve is visibly changed for all these measurements here, the curve is above the squares. So that means that the curve is clearly not the best possible fit. If we go down two steps, we, c we retrieve the original curve. You see how the original curve goes straight through the squares. So that is really the best fit. And similarly, if we go down 2%, then you can see that the curve is visibly below the squares, at least at the, at the very end, towards the very end. So again, that is clearly not the best fit. So we can argue that perhaps this value that we have here of minus 4.9 is accurate to within plus or minus 2%, which is really very satisfactory. All right, that's the end of the analysis of these data. And now it is up to you to choose another situation and analyze the data and see what information you get out of that.